Wow! I feel the goo. I know that I won't know. I feel the goo. I knew that I would now. So, so much, much goo. goo. So, so much, much goo. goo. I got a you. Yo, yo, yo. What's good, everybody? We're here. We got uh, Mr. Four Time. Four Time for the Four Time. <laughs> um, so, guys, we're on uh, episode number 10 of the Goo Cast. And, you know, who else will we have other than the latest YCS champion from YCS Minnesota, Chris LeBlanc. Yo, what's up, Chris? How, how are you doing, bro? You what's good? going on? Uh, yeah, I'm doing great. <laughs> Dude, you, so we were having a chat just before this, uh, <laughs> just before we went live, and you were talking about how I think yesterday was actually your 10-year anniversary of your first YCS win ever. Bro. Can, yeah, it's like kind of that... <laughs> crazy. <laughs> it's kind of wild, right? Um, yeah, because, I mean, especially because I was only 15, uh, I think that was the crazy part to me, too. So I was still in high school, and, like, honestly... Like, 10 years later, I did not expect to be winning another YCS. Yeah. Dude, I mean, but you, but you did it. You did. So, um, let, let's actually start from, start from the beginning, right? So, for people who yeah. don't know you, uh, just how about give you a little bit of introduction about yourself? Uh, and uh, when did you first start playing Yu-Gi-Oh? Um, oh, yeah. So, I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh in 2003. Um, my uncle took me to get the structured X, and then I started going to Toys R Us, and they okay. had these... Uh, like they taught you how to play. Um, they would give out like free cards. There was like it was pretty um it was a pretty cool resource back then. And then somebody from Toys R Us told me that they were doing tournaments somewhere. So like 15 minutes from my house, I started doing tournaments, and then I just kind of liked it from there. So that's where I started. But um, it's kind of crazy because I played my first event very early, very early um, in 2005 yeah. in Boston. It was like uh, 20 minutes from my house. It was a show and jump. I was eight years old. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I, I I did pretty uh pretty bad. I was I went like four and um I was like five and four or something like that. But I beat somebody that um, went eight one and then got ninth place. So they didn't top. So I was like the worst tiebreaker for them. Damn. <laughs> okay, that's that that's actually kind of crazy. And, How and did so you feel about ruining someone day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, there's nothing I could have done though. I mean, yeah. Also, I was a kid, I'm just sitting there playing. <laughs> Also, you have been playing since you were a kid, right? Yeah. And Yu-Gi-Oh! as a card pool has changed over time. Uh, what yeah. are ways in which you adapted to the current competitive scene? Um, I think never be scared to ask for help. Uh, I feel mm -hmm. like there's always somebody that, like, I'll come back to the game and then I'll expect, like, oh, like, I should be fine. But then again, like, I always go to, like, my resources, my friends, like, who's been playing the game for, like, the, uh, the years prior. Um, it was really hard coming back after four years. Um, that's like the longest time I've ever quit. Yep. But uh, it took me like a year to like come back, and then it was like eight months in, I started topping again. But like, I feel like you really do need like a full year of like playing the formats to like kind of get back into the groove. But, yeah. Um, my friends had definitely helped me get caught up. Yeah. So, um, so I guess yeah. Do you want to give any any shout outs be before uh, we, we go right super deep dive into the rest of this podcast? Um, oh my gosh, yeah, I can literally shout out like all of my friends. Yeah, 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 yeah um, of course. But more recently, um, coming back into the game, uh, Jose Santiago, like yeah. he was like the first person that I started testing with when I came back. Um, uh, Pat getting back into the game was something that really like made me want to start playing again. Uh, we go to every event together. We test like, and he makes a lot of the decks, which is, we just like finalize them. But um, <laughs> those specifically. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, Pat is crazy. <laughs> Okay, that's awesome. Okay, and so let's let's talk about um just like the the last event you played in, right? So before I before you got back into the game in 2021, I think the uh, the last format you played in was 2017 Zoo format, and you actually won a YCS yes. in 2017 as well. Um, we're about to approach a tier zero format. You know, a lot of people know that the season cards are literally yeah. wild. And I, you and I were testing a little bit, and we, we saw how broken those cards were. <laughs> um, you played in a Tier 0 format before. What do you think is needed to succeed in Tier 0 formats? Um, I think you definitely have to have an edge in your deck. Um, mm -hmm. Like in, in prior formats, we can go back to like Necroz, uh, where Secret Village was a card that we started playing in our deck. Um, Scolding, like there was a bunch of cards that had like a high impact on the format, even though everyone's playing a lot of the similar cards. You kind of just have to be aware of what like 
like what is going on within these decks to know uh like what you should be putting in your deck to mm-hmm. to counter it all and there's there's normally like a small engine or it could just be um something as simple as like nat beast uh in necroz because you know it stops like every spell that summons something yeah there's a there's a lot of formats where it's mattered um so we'll go to zoo format next right yeah so during zoo format if you added the draco cards in your deck you had a strict advantage because a lot of people are playing d barrier um you were able to keep playing you were also able to like there was a lot more push uh the ceiling was a lot higher so I think those are like good examples of an edge in, in um, okay. tier zero formats, like deck building wise, right? Yeah, because you know I think Nesh and I we were looking at like a bunch of OCG deck lists for Ijizu tier, and bro, all, all their deck lists look the same. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it's like you know what's going I think they on. They lack okay. um, they lack originality in, in, in uh, over there. It's it's kind of crazy, but I mean I understand because they have cards like Maxi in the format. Yeah. What I usually do. When I go, like, obviously, I go on Road of the King because it has, like, the most uh, resources for uh, European players. But what I usually do, I translate the name of the deck from English to Japanese, and then I copy-paste it to um, today to Google, and then basically pops off, like, a bounce of links in um, Japanese, and I click randomly all of those, and I find the deck lists. It's quite, <laughs> quite useful. <laughs> Nice peeps the goo. Yeah, I peeped the goo. And I'm very happy for that. But before moving on the deck list, I really have to ask this. How many Yu-Gi-Oh tattoos do you have? Ah, yes. Um, <laughs> so I got uh, one. Uh, this is the Money Am I, uh, the Money Am Puzzle. I got Corey's name on my arm uh, mm-hmm. with the Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I have the Money Am Scale. <laughs> um, I have more puzzles and then the Rods. Um, yeah, that's it for Yu-Gi-Oh! Tattoos, so five. Five, okay, okay. Yeah, you, I'm you're... working on getting, uh, all of the Millennium items. Are there any memories related to those, and which is your favorite one? Um, this one's probably my favorite, the one with Corey. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, like, it means a lot more, because, uh, it makes me think about him. Um, but for, like, my hand tattoos, honestly, I like the most. They kind of, uh... City boys! <laughs> 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 It is yeah. my newest one, so... <laughs> yeah, that was wild. Um, but I like the Yu-Gi-Oh! hand tats. Um, it's just, like, it looks cool also when I'm playing on stream, so it's kind of easy to, like... Well, when they were doing remote duels, it's kind of easy to tell that it was me, too, yeah. because I had the tattoo, so... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, so, uh, this this past YCS at, at uh, YCS Minnesota, what, what did you feel, you know contributed the most to you winning the event because a, a lot of players when they enter tournaments you know they have the same mindset that we all do that everyone wants to win but what do you feel like you like we talked about edge what edge do you feel like you had that like you know other people uh, didn't have as much you know i feel like the deck list was definitely a huge edge um being able to lock my opponent out um a lot of people not knowing what my cards did uh u- utilizing a lot more of the new cards um a lot of good going second cards there was a lot to it yep. uh, that was the biggest thing um going into a new format in general i feel like i have an edge because a lot of people just don't know the cards or they they're not used to playing with cards so they their their brains don't really function the same way um <laughs> but it definitely uh just honestly that that was like the biggest thing that stood out yeah. to me I'll be honest, I didn't understand your deck list at first when I first saw it. And then Hani and, like, Kamal was, like, t- showing me, like, the test hands, and, which is mad funny. Because then I was like, yo, I kept drawing. I'm like, yo, this, why, why am I drawing kind of broken that- right now? <laughs> I'm drawing yeah, kind of crazy right now. There were a few hands where you didn't draw, like, <laughs> like a very high ceiling turn. Yeah. Um, you always had access to everything. If you didn't have access to the tier engine, you just sprint. If you didn't have access to, like, the level uh the level two is you just sprint like yeah. sprinted everything i think let's talk about like the to be honest after i watched your deck list i was like mm. why the fuck does he play the second sprint then i tested your deck list and i have to admit that the second sprint is it actually comes up very a lot. useful comes yeah. up almost, a lot comes up a lot almost every time i go second I mean, i'm sorry every time i every go first time. i would use it oh, yeah sorry. every time you yeah i i think yeah, i think it's very good yeah i totally agree with that uh i am uh, like i think it was quite a genius to add the second spread it's a thing that no one might have noticed but yeah uh, we cut it, it actually we makes ip very useful it. now because now you can play around the beasted if they beasted your monster when you go for elf and then you can just as a backup plan go ip 
into the second sprint in order to send a name and still f let function your engine, which is very useful in my opinion. Like I liked it a lot. One question I have about the deck list. Uh, you played 46 cards. You were yes. playing three uh, Shatri La Fenrir. Now, the, the deck list was, in my opinion, was kind of conflicting with Shatri La Fenrir. What are your thoughts about that? Um, I feel like the only way I looked at that card was it's good going first or second, and I wanted to play three of it. It was just too good of a value. Um, I knew I was going to be playing against a lot of uh, rogue decks still in the format because people would default to that, like Plunder uh, as an example of one of them. And like it has a very strong matchup versus those decks specifically, even though it might not have been the best thing in the world versus like tier. Um, it was still okay versus tier. It, it definitely um, held its own, but just I wanted more going second cards. And that's like where uh, me and Pat kind of like came to a uh, consensus on playing like three super poly, three tactics, and then three three Fenrir because, well, Fenrir go is good going first and second. Super poly could be good going first and second, and then same for tactics in a format where people play Bistral, so. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree on the talent and the super poly because those, like, there were two approach to this. You could even play Droll and Impermanence or super poly and tactics, in my opinion, for this event. Um, and also Fenrir, as you said, it's very good against those rogue decks, especially when they play Necro Valley in the main deck, like, for example, Exorcister, in order to out it. It's actually quite useful, in my opinion. Like, if it was not in my main deck, it would, it would definitely be in my side deck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fenrir's is big. Like I, I, I almost lost to this guy in Swiss that was just playing like Fenrir control. Like, like, uh, <laughs> like uh, the Fenrir was just works, but... <laughs> no, no. Like, like I basically outed all of his cars, um, and then I put him on nothing, and he tops like Fenrir, and I was like, that's kind of awkward. Like I have to like <laughs> flashing fire it, but I didn't have flashing fire at that moment in time, so I'm like, damn, this Fenrir is really about to go in right now. <laughs> so he like started. He went like battle phase attack, banished my fountain face down. I'm like, yo, he's cooking me. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, yeah. I, I banished fountain a lot. Yeah, car was solid. Did you, um, I think, uh, let's talk about the goo of the day. I think a super underrated card that I saw in your deck list is, uh, tier limit, uh, grief. I, I like, yeah. bro, I don't know how that card was on my deck list. Like, I mean, obviously I obviously didn't play I tier I feel deck. like a lot of people overlooked it, which yeah. is, which is crazy because I think, um, it also came from people not knowing how the card worked. Yeah, and you obviously knew what the card like did and how it worked. It was just like other people were weren't playing it because of that, but like people not knowing that you could summon a monster and then send the monster you summon, which was crazy. Yeah, um, I think that was literally the biggest thing. Nobody asked, and I asked before the event. I'm like, can you do this? I asked the uh, um, a head judge, and I was confirmed. So why wouldn't I play it? Yeah, it's, it's basically was, foolish burial, but better. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Because I, I think it's a I think we talked a little bit before about your deck list and how it bridges together, like the two engines of Sprite and Tier Elements. Grief was a really cool card because, um, like I said, I didn't really understand your deck. I'll be honest. I looked at it, I'm like, bro, <laughs> what the hell is this shit? And then I was like, now I thought a little bit more about it, looked at it a little bit more objectively, and I was like, wait, that's really cool because the Nimble Beavers in your deck are water monsters. So the Grief can summon rhino and send the beaver right, and then yeah. go rhino effect and i'm like yo that's crazy <laughs> i <laughs> like, did what? that one time most of the time i was summoning rhino heart and just sending a card from my hand which was still like oh insane. okay yeah got it got it got it got it yeah that's that's actually pretty sick so definitely yeah. guys if you, if you guys haven't looked at uh chillman crime or chillman grief yet i uh, definitely definitely go check that out and it's so funny because it came up in your uh feature match right in in the finals where I think you actually yeah. used the graveyard effect of it because you were under I, I used the graveyard. <laughs> yeah, I was under shifter and then I added back the cellie. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I fanned it. I fanned my uh, banish because I knew it was there and I just yeah. pointed to it. I'm like, oh, this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. There is another goo of the day. <laughs> oh, yeah. What is it, Nash? And as you said before, during the Zodiac format, there were uh, a dimensional barrier, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think about Shadow Imprisoning Mirror? Oh. That can be used um, against the sprite and against the tier elements. Yeah, that honestly, like, it's not a bad card. I just feel as, like, there are better floodgates. Like, Ravelry is a better floodgate than that card. Um, yeah. And you're really only going to play cards like that in deck, like, say, like, Math Max. You're not going to play it in the tier deck. So I don't have to worry about cards like that first tier. I have to worry about, like, normally a deck that plays all the same type. So I feel like Ravelry would just, like, overtake that spot. Like, yeah. in, like, an anti-meta type. Yeah, deck. definitely. So. I totally agree on that as well. Do you, I totally agree on that as well. Mm -hmm. Do you guys see any any um, other decks that are 
uh, viable to compete in the upcoming Ishizu meta? Like, I know we're all looking um, at Ishizu tier, but do you have any any idea on that for people listening in? Uh, still any deck that plays D Shifter, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, don't encourage it's them. Sad, but, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 the truth. I mean, they, it keeps showing out. It keeps getting like to the finals. Like it just won in Niagara. Like it's just D Shifter can hold its own in in this format. It's definitely shown that. Yeah. Um, we might even see some like minds coming back because they kind of destroy the certain types of decks people are making. That's why I like the um, Sprite Engine having the out and that's why i played we played the one heartbeat um yeah, yeah so many outs having those outs yeah. when you need yeah exactly but people are going with these no mine out decks and even in the finals my opponent asked me he's like uh how many cards in your deck i was like oh i know he's thinking about mining me right now <laughs> um, uh, i told him 46 and i guess he just didn't do it because of it yeah which was kind of cool so. I, I i got mine on feature bro tears <laughs> I saw that. I saw they yeah. made a meme out of it. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, stop, he's already dead. And it's going to yeah. be also in my new YouTube video that's going to be up tomorrow. Yeah. That's scene. You know stop, what's he's already dead. Yeah, I, I was cooked, man. Evenly is insane. Dude, you know um, what? Yeah, what was going through your head when, when your opponent activated duality in the finals and didn't grab Evenly match? Dude, that, um, that was a crazy moment, right? <laughs> I have to be honest. At first, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want uh, him to like i don't want to influence his decision but then i realized i'm like i'm here i might as well like say something about the rabina so i told him like oh i know you have don't have rabina yet so i was like hoping that he would just take the rabina and he did so yeah yeah that um, alien match is gonna cook you bro <laughs> I was, was scared yeah. yeah i gotta be yeah. real because after that i have no plays like the only, the only way i knew i was gonna like have a chance is if i actually just left stuff on the board that's why i made like the play with the elf to put stuff on the board yeah i was like hopefully he just like get stopped by my uh one negate and then but he ended up having map um it was it was a crazy game mm -hmm. nonetheless. oh how did you know he had no robina it was because of your millennium mice on the end uh well so he definitely didn't take it uh he didn't take the once he flipped up the cards to try and take the evenly matched he didn't do it, so like I was like, oh, I need to mention the Rabina because I really want him to take Rabina here. Yeah, um, that's and it, yeah, that's big brain, my man. That's yeah. big then he, brain. Then he took also, it, so I was like, <laughs> also you mentioned the Mystic Mine. Um, this Shizu deck has not only Earthbeat as out to Mystic Mine. There is also another out when you go first. Uh, I, it's just for the sake to mention it for the viewers, for the, the people that are listening us. When you have the field spell face up. Uh, and they activate Mystic Mine. You can chain link to Keldo, or you can chain link to Mudora by targeting one of your tier elements in the graveyard to shuffle it back into the deck. And in a new yeah. chain, you can pop Mystic Mine with the field spell. That's a quite good interaction. And it makes really literally interaction. the field spell Perlerino a new Dryadent. The problem is huh? definitely that if, if someone's playing Mystic Mine in a deck, I think at this point, they're almost certainly playing Runic cards which makes any runic card out to that. But that's why I feel as Smasher still has to be in your deck if you're playing in a format like this because you can't really, like, afford... I think people are, less people are playing mine, but mine is still out there, and I feel like it could literally just win an event at any moment if people get too comfortable. Bro, that's what I was talking about the other day. He was like, bro, yeah. or maybe it was someone else. I won't say who it was, but I, it was someone else. He was like, yo, bro, you want you trying to play Mystic Mind for Pat CD? I'm like... I'm like, oh god, no! <laughs> but then in the back yeah, of my head, I, <laughs> in the back of my head, I'm thinking to myself, bro, like, what if, like, what if a good player takes Mystic Mind to an event, right? It's always like some, it's always like, like I've never well, seen like a top player on like troll like these type of decks. But what if, you know, like that'd be interesting. Well, it, it's <sighs> never really just a Mystic Mind deck. It's yeah. normally like a deck, but it plays Mystic Mind because it can. Like with the Prank Kid deck that uh, Ruben came up with at, yeah. uh, earlier in the year. Like, I feel like that was the best deck for the for that event and yeah, the event insane. after because everyone was on Despia and there was no else to mine in the Despia deck. So yeah. it was like it the was most scary great. part about Mystic Mine is when you play against a deck that you don't expect siding Mystic Mine. For example, let's take for the sake of the discussion, Drytron was siding Mystic Mine. And during the first event that Drytron started to side Mystic Mine, that was very unexpected because people were not siding the out. Yeah. Now the out became a little bit more generic, like for example Smasher, for example the Runic Destruction that you have to play in your deck, and that, those are not only Spell and Trap Destruction, but they are also part of your engine. Yeah. So this makes like the mix a little more doable, especially against those combo decks that go randomly um, and splash Mystic Mind. I don't think Mystic Mind is going to see probably 
the light of the next event, or at least not as a three-off, maybe as a one-off. What do you think about it? Uh, do you think we are going to see maybe more Mystic Minds? Or, uh... um, I, honestly, I, I don't think Mystic Mind will be played as much. Even, like, because I think uh, the Keldo interaction that you mentioned makes it, like, really hard for your opponent to even play mine, right? Like, I, I think if people have to play mine, I, I don't know. I, just don't, I also don't even know what deck would even play Mystic Mind. To be honest, um, so are we kind of justifying Konami for not banning Mystic Mind? Maybe Konami hey. was right. Maybe mine doesn't need to be banned. <laughs> What's that? So we were wrong all along. I'm sorry, Konami. Wait, Chris, do you think uh, yeah. right. do you think mine needs to be banned or no? I think mine needs to be banned. Um, okay. I think they're doing a good job at like combating it uh, with the decks and making the engine outs. I think that's a huge part about creating a card like that. They have to look way far ahead in the meta and like see what's going to be like played. Um, obviously, uh, uh, um, like the adventure out like is a good consistent out. So they thought about this like through multiple formats. It wasn't just we're going to make this card and we're going to make the format all about it. It's 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 kind of like a it's a good advantage though for for people that you know they want to make the casual player base. You know, e even though it sounds like it hurts the casual player base casual players can pick up Mystic Mind and win, which is what will make people want to play, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I think um, the uh, the other thing that I was going to talk about was uh, if we look at miss cards like Mystic Mind, like all, like all the broken cards, I, I don't know. For me, I, I still find cards even like evenly matched and all those blow cards, like literally in the same in the same, I guess, category of broken cards. Like, I don't, I don't know what's your take on board breakers, like Dark Ruler or, like, cards like Droplets or cards like Evenly, like, all those cards, because those cards are, like, devastating. Like, you know, sometimes, like... I think... Yeah. What do you they think? They play a big role in the format. Um, I think people make their deck based on those cards being in the format already. Yeah. Um, that's why a lot of people were putting up Omni Negates before. Um, they're still trying to put up an Omni Negate now with Baron um, to out the Evenly... Too many people, uh, too many like plays in certain decks now that set up like more lines. Then it's funny that you said Dark Ruler. I'm literally holding one right here. So, <laughs> um, Dark Ruler is one of those cards that it makes it so you can't just set up a board. You have to do something else. Like with the Tier Limit Trap, it kind of gets around it. Uh, there's a lot of things that like you can play through even when they Dark Ruler you. So I think that's why it's seeing less play now because of like the tier deck. It's not as good, um, especially because if they Dweller you, it doesn't do anything. So. Yeah. So, do you think entraps are falling off to the next event, or do you think there are some valuable entraps to put in your mind? I think the best hand traps are the bestial monsters. Uh, so, I think yeah. they kind of replaced hand traps by uh, by themselves. Um, like a DD crow with a body just doesn't really sound too fair. And then even being able to some like search one, pop one, like their effects are just way too broken. Uh, like regular hand traps are gonna like kind of fade away for like a little bit. Um, it just makes sense unless you're trying to play hand traps. And the bestial monsters, which I mean, it seems like it'd be kind of repetitive. Yeah. Um, also, you studied, you started to study the Shizu format, right? Do you think the yeah. Shizu deck needs a monster omni negation in order to fight um, the counters? I, I think, yeah, it would it would definitely be helpful. Um, I still think uh, evenly is probably going to be like running through the format. Um, I don't really think it needs uh, it, like an answer as much to Dark Ruler. Um, people might start playing Droplet um, because of Ibli. I just don't really, I don't really think uh, these Shizu cards are gonna make it any better for players like to like play through boards because they're gonna have more cards in the graveyard that activate. So it's gonna be a lot harder. Um, it's it's really gonna add a whole new dynamic because both players are gonna be able to have these cards in their deck and then. I mean, don't the bestial monster are an already inherent out to Ibli if you just tribute summon Ibli for the bestial? Uh, so it would be an out, but uh, it, then after that, if you would summon it back with Elf, and then you would just IP think again, and then give it back, yeah, and then get rid of the, the bestial monster, it's <laughs> the same thing as you normal summoning, and then me getting rid of that. Yeah. That the, makes sense. Yeah, the tribute, the tribute summon is not an out, because yeah, it, it's too broken, because you, you, so, yeah, you need a double back. bestial. Yeah, because we were playing with bestials in our deck when we were testing before the event. It's just not an out. Yeah, it's just. I I, I thought the tribute summon was an out too, but then like, like making a sprint off like the IP, give them Ibli, and then you sprint on Merly, and then you Merly them again, 
and or like you murder them into like a Kaleido heart and you Kaleido heart back their Bistia and they're just stuck with a Nibbly and they're just like uh, sick. Yeah. <laughs> like that sounded Not that sounded wild. <laughs> that sounded wild. Yeah. Yeah, it happened a lot. Yeah. So, so I was gonna ask, um, because I think a lot of people listening in in anticipation of why this Pasadena. I, I know you're attending. Um, what do you feel like you're doing to prepare for this event? Uh, that uh, would contribute, like, I guess, like, the most to, like, success for, for that YCS? Um, definitely reading the new cards is, like, very important and winning the mm. last one. Um, I feel like I definitely had the edge because a lot of people still, like I said, didn't know the cards. So yeah. you should definitely be reading all the cards in the set. Um, you should probably try to, be, uh, try to incorporate the cards into your deck because the cards are really insane. Yeah. Um, whether you're just going to play, like, the full engine or part of it, uh, there's, like, plenty of different ways you can go. Mm-hmm. Is there anything specifically you do like during playtesting that like uh that you feel like would be beneficial for people to like know, um just just overall, like how do you um, test an engine in order yeah. to see if it's good or not? Normally, uh, we'll have like one player. I like testing IRL uh, more than testing online, uh -huh. but when I can't <laughs> test IRL, um, yeah. uh, normally we'll whatever deck we're testing, we'll play against like the general, like the, the standard deck. Of the format so from the last event that i played we looked at the standard deck as josh's deck from uh, ycsu trick mm -hmm. so we were testing mainly versus that um testing versus like basic tier like just kind of gathering your knowledge and uh playing against the decks that you feel like you're going to play against the most like going into a tournament uh learning those interactions very important um like Interacting is uh, learning the interactions is the like honestly the most important part about play testing because you go to an event you could be playing your deck by yourself like the whole time and then you go to an event and then not know how to play versus certain interactions which is a huge flaw most people have um, when play testing I value that over anything. Very good, that's yeah. very very good. Yeah, I would so, agree. <clears throat> what's your next goal? <laughs> um, <laughs> this sounds crazy. Well, I what's the next? Yeah, no. eh? what's the next one? Um. I would love to go to Worlds, uh, so I'm going for points this year. Uh, that's probably like my main goal right now. Uh, whether I do it through Nats or points, uh, I am trying to go. <laughs> have you ever been been to Worlds, or I have never been to Worlds. The best I did at Nats was top 64 two years. Um, when I was 16, I, I lost in top 64, and then when I was 20, I lost in top 64. Damn. Mr. Blanco, we are blessing you with the lines today. We're gonna go to Worlds. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Chat yeah. is gonna Let's go to there. words and you will rewatch this and saying Nash said that. He's gonna go to words. <laughs> uh, so someone's asking like how how old are you right now? I'm 25 right now. 25. What the? F That's crazy. So 10 years ago you won, you won your first YCS in 2012, and then, yes. and then 10 years later, <laughs> bro, it's crazy because yeah. uh, I think Hanse did the same thing, right? Because Hanse won in 2012. Yeah, Hanse well. won 10 years. He won in 2011. Um, yeah. 2011. TG Stun. Yeah, I played TG Stun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. TG Stun. Yeah, yeah, so him winning 10 years later was kind of crazy too. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Oh, you would know... you call this a return of the, the Stone Age players? Like <laughs> the, the Revenge. <laughs> I, I do think, like, uh, what are your thoughts on, like, um, like re-entering the game? Because you, you came back after, like, a four-year break. Um, and I, I know you mentioned, it's like... Tough. Yeah, it's tough, right? Um, and it's I, I so imagine hard. for new players, it's probably even, like, tougher. So... Yeah, if you don't have any prior knowledge of the game, new players coming in, it's it's not it's not impossible. Like I have a lot of uh, friends that are new players that just started in the past like year or two, and they they've topped events. You know, it's 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 really never too late for you to just start. Um, but like, it's obviously a lot easier when you come back after you're not playing for so long. But four year the four year time period of me not playing was the, the, definitely the hardest transition because I quit right when um links came out. Uh, I won the first event that had links in it. In, uh, in Toronto, and then I just quit right after, so I didn't get to play the links at all. Coming back, to that's that, not a wild. Part, <laughs> that's not a wild. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never, never, uh, never, never got to play with links, and then now you're out yeah. here like freaking link summoning, fusion summoning, X Y Z summoning. <laughs> yeah, it's it's everything now. It feels great though, honestly. This it feels like there's so much uh, diversity in the extra deck alone. Like you can do literally anything. Yeah. So, so, so do you do yeah. you like Yu Gi Oh being a diverse card game? Uh, compared to other games that are more simple and more easy to pick up? Uh, that's actually the reason why I play Yu-Gi-Oh! is because it's the hardest, in my opinion. Um, I like challenging myself. Obviously, the, the money is not as, like, 
as good as other games you could play, even like Magic, Pokemon, Poker, like all these other games, you can make way more money, but Yu-Gi-Oh! just feels like the most challenging. So that's why I, I keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I like also challenging my brain. Like when you are when you are building a combo dex and then and then you have to start yeah. <laughs> searching for all the old cards to rig the entire pool because you have to find the tech. You have to have mm -hmm. the edge over your opponent. Like you have to blow up your mind when you play. That's the feeling yeah. that I'm looking for. Yeah, bro, exactly. <laughs> bro, I I turned zero chain link ten in the Shizu mirror. I, I <laughs> yeah. never felt so god like my in my entire life. <laughs> turn zero chain <laughs> turn, turn zero chain link ten sounds crazy. <laughs> That's not insane. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, um, man. So, so I, than, I, yeah, sorry, what's up? Nash, no, it's all you. It's all you. Or that they read the cards. Like uh, you tested the mirror, I guess the Shizu mirror. Um, do you have any suggestions? Because I see people randomly using their Shizu effect. I'm not going to lie. My big, the, my best suggestion that I could give anyone right now is don't mill five from your opponent's deck. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank that you. Is, thank you. I was waiting for this. Yeah. I was waiting for this. Please set up a dweller before milling five. Don't be a bozo. Yeah. Or, maybe or just, just don't even mill five. <laughs> yeah. Or not even mill five. That's not crazy. Um, yeah. Dude, I, I think these Shizu cards are like so suspect because uh, when you know every bro, like I had this epiphany. That I'm like, what if I just don't play the mill five cards, but only play the the shuffle back cards, right? Because, you know, yeah, like, <laughs> like it just makes sense. Yeah, because it makes your sense. opponent was just mill for you, right? If your opponent just like, I, I've watched the OCG matches and like, bro, these people are like wild. They they start milling ten from your opponent's decks, and I'm just thinking about, it, I'm like, yo, you're you're nasty. See, like you're you're a savage. I also don't even like, I might not even agree with making Dweller first to do it because yep. then they're just milling Ishizu cards and then they just work next turn anyway, which is a huge, huge problem. Yeah. Like, I'd rather just not have to use my Dweller like that um, by not by not milling the cards for them at all. Yeah. So also, there are other things to take, like, in consideration. For example, there is in the mirror, someone might play the Herald of the Orange Light. And if you do it, they have Herald of the Orange Light. Then my, you yeah, might put then, yourself in then, a tough spot. Exactly. Then you're milling cards for them. They're progressing also while just getting rid of your dweller, which should never happen. Yeah, dude, this is uh, my this is gonna be my first quote unquote tier zero format. So I'm um, I'm kind of really? excited. Yeah, yeah. I I, I mean I yeah. started 2019, late 2019. Okay. My my first deck was Salomon Great, bro. What's up? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, I, I played a few Salomon Greats in Top Cut this year. No. Oh, you did, dude. In I remember why says yeah why says God of Lahara. I saw you playing against yeah. a Sal player, and the funniest thing happened. Chris was reading Salamanca cards. He was like, "Cause he never played. <laughs> <laughs> he never played in 2019." So he was like, "Yo, what 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 does a what does a Spinny do?" I'm like, "Yo, no way." It, it was crazy because I played them in top 16 too of that event. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Yo, you're yeah, not." I played top 16 in round eight. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you you beat him in Swiss, right? No, or you did you lose yeah, him in Swiss? I, yeah, I beat him in Swiss. Oh, you beat yeah, him in Swiss. I, I went uh, I went undefeated in Swiss. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You kicked him in Swiss and you saw him again in top sixteen with his Salomon yeah. great strategy. <laughs> that was insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, I loved reading the cards though. I mean, it helped me. Yeah, it's okay. They always send on an EB to Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so, um, now, now that like you know, we have we have Why Swiss Pasadena coming up. I, I'm sure people would want to know. Uh, and here from you, what other YCs are you going to? Uh, that's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to uh, Pasadena, okay. um, Germany, uh, the one in Dortmund, um, Costa Rica. Jeez. And then I want to go to YCS Sydney, and I, I've been looking at flights, but I have to get my visa to, to go there first. So that's going to be a tough one. Okay. Um, okay. But I definitely want to go, so I'm going to try my best. Yo, bro. You, you, dude, let me catch up, man. You trying to get five rings already? Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. I'm going to see you at all these events. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll see you at all. Of, I think except Dortmund. I don't, I don't know if I'm attending Dortmund, but... I That's going to be a fun one, honestly. Yeah. I've never been to Europe, so I've, I've been looking forward to that. Yeah, I saw you. Um, I saw you tweeted at at Josh, or you you uh, wrote on his uh, wall. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you were like, "Yo, Josh, it's your I, turn. I, it's your turn, dude. That would be a crazy future match. You versus Josh. That would be crazy. Honestly, that would be great. Yeah. So I just I just posted that to like try to like you know motivate him. I know he's already motivated because he just won, but like I yeah. know it definitely helped me when he won. I I was telling everybody, I'm like, this motivated me so much. I want to win mm -hmm. so bad right now because <laughs> so someone caught up. You know, like it's not every day. <laughs> So, so you sit on stage right, right next to uh, to Billy. He was also a four-time 
Watch this champ. You think uh you think you can uh, motivate Billy to come out of retirement? <laughs> I was trying my best, uh, honestly. Yeah. Um, Bro, uh, I don't. I think it's gonna be really tough. I think maybe if I got like five or six, maybe you know he might think yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, but as of right now, Billy's got a good uh, good gig going, and honestly, like I appreciate what he does for like for for the game as a whole. Mm -hmm. Definitely, uh, it's great having him there commentating too. It's like so entertaining, like being able to see him at least still in the scene. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I'm about to ask you something crazy, bro. My my spark a lot of controversy, which is, who who uh who's your favorite player in the game? Me, <laughs> oh, man. oh, dude, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> me, um, obviously, I'm his favorite player. Say me, say me, say me. So, so, I, I gotta no be honest. Okay, is, there's only one player in the game that really stands out when you ask me that question, and it's Ruben. Ruben, bro, let's yeah. go. Ruben's insane. Ruben's insane. Shout out yeah, to Ruben's Ruben. insane. Like his energy is like so great, like twenty four seven. Yeah. Um, he loves the game. Very passionate about it. You can tell when he gets like yeah. emotional about it, and I love it because like that's exactly how I feel when yeah. I, whenever I'm playing. And honestly, that's what really stands out to me. I think. Uh, I think it was in Brazil. I think he lost on a bubble, and I remember looking him in the eye, and like I could I could see the waters, bro. You could like, just tell. You could like, just that tell. Is, Did he look down that... to you, no, bro? Goosebumps. I'm talking about these are. Yeah, I, I literally, literally felt. I literally felt goosebumps. I'm like, yo, this is like, like you could tell like when someone cares about the game and they really love it. And I, I literally looked at. I'm like, yeah. yo, I, I'm with you, brother. <laughs> like this is, this is like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that last yeah, round. No, I like, totally get it. After all the work you put into and like you're just like don't you don't Losing make it. Losing the bubble is like a different feeling too. Like yeah, you, you really just feel like crushed inside. So you can tell. Yeah. Hey, don't worry, bro. I, I've been there five times. What's up? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there was there was a whole year where I bubbled like five events. I started five zero at all of them. Yeah, it, 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 there's been some rough years. It wasn't like you know, there's sometimes like squeezing like a couple tops like every now and then. But like it's there's it's really like a very like mm -hmm. high variance game still. Yeah, yeah, like even if you prepare a lot, even if you test a lot, sometimes the variance just take you down. Like doesn't matter yeah. how good you are, sometimes it's just not your day. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How how many um yeah. for people listening, how many tops do you have right now in total? How many tops uh, you got? 13. How many tops you got? How much? Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen tops. Uh, two two nationals. Uh, and then eleven YCTS. Okay, dude, that's crazy because I feel like, um, like when you do top, you always go so deep. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying in top. Yeah, cut? I, I, it's yeah. been yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> come on, I were talking. Once I get to top cut, I kind of feel like a different level. I'm like I get like powered up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is. You know, okay, we gotta have people tell the story, bro. So so um, <clears throat> you, you want to tell your story about about the finals for you? Like every um, every finals. Oh, so yeah, I've I've never lost a game in the finals, which is kind of crazy. So I'm eight zero in games, which is kind of like a crazy. <laughs> bro, that is that is wild. I don't want to say anything, but when before your opponent was drawing his cards, I saw I sing my Flanders song. I don't know if you know about my Flanders song, but they made, but it makes Flanders players break. It's gonna be my video on YouTube very soon. Oh, you gotta go like check tomorrow. this out too. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yo, I need to hear this song because I'm gonna start singing it. <laughs> is is it the is it like wait? Nice, give us a preview. What does it what does it sound like? Uh, if you wanna be my lover. Don't play Flanders. That shit lasts forever. That shit always breaks. If you wanna be my lover, don't play Flanders. That shit lasts forever. What? That shit always breaks. <laughs> yes. That was and he best. breaked. It's three on three, by the way. Three on three. Yo. Three on three on stream. I, 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 I sing the song and they break. Three on three. Never failed. Dude, my Flander opponents never break. They make it look like the best deck of all time. Because like, you no don't say the song. I, uh... I almost lost the Flunder on the bubble two times this year uh, at YCS. I lost on the bubble of uh, the remote duel you trick. I, I started 8-1, and then yeah. I lost my first round, and then I mm. lost on the bubble to Flunder. And then I topped Columbia, but I almost lost on the bubble to Flunder. But game three, uh, he, he bricked. You know, he was, he's pro Nesh was probably singing the song. Like, yeah. I was. I was. Um, I was. Flander so is kind of I was win. like, there's That's no right. way that I can lose in the finals of Flunder. I was like telling myself, like, I've, yeah. I've had this battle with Flunder all year. Like, I've, I'm prepared. It's just... Yeah, Flunder is scary, man. Like, uh, dude, that, that deck just gives me trauma. When, when someone sits in front of me, I'm praying to God, like, I don't get shifted. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, you pray to God. They break. I actually sing I mean, a song for you to not get shifted, too. And you didn't get shifted, <laughs> but you got evenly matched Mystic Mind. I mean, well, brother, I, I cannot. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> 
Dude, he had Dark Ruler, yeah. Terraforming for Mine, and Evilly Match. I was freaking scrambling. We need the Mystic Mind song. Where's the Mystic Mind song? <laughs> no, facts. I'll find one. Um, I, I know um you also have a, a, a YouTube YouTube channel. You wanna you wanna talk about that? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. I've been trying to make a more like competitive like style of like uh, channel. Um, that's why I don't always go over all the basic stuff like on like every single deck profile like, but um. I've definitely been trying to show like that 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 old school scene of Yu Gi Oh to where mm -hmm. like people are doing a lot of profiles, um, showing off decks that like they like that were just in the moment instead of like going over a deck before an event because one I want to keep like my edge in whatever I end up playing. Um, two, I don't want to like promote something that I don't think is the best and then give people this like wrong impression. So like I normally focus on showing after events. That's for now as I try to like you know obtain more like uh, accomplishments in Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, I th I think like there's stuff to learn <clears throat> from like videos prior to events, and there's stuff to learn from profiles like after the event. If that makes sense, I feel like you. Yeah. There's like value from both sides because like when you see a deck after the event and you see like if it did well or not, you can like learn the theory about like what went into like the deck building process. Like why did this player choose to play this? It deck? helps in the yeah. long term. Exactly. For sure. <clears throat> Like I, I always enjoy watching like profiles, even even like ones that like don't top. Like I, I still watch them. Like and because people would put up like, uh, bubble profiles like all the time. Like there was like two Thunder Dragon profiles that bubbled, that got posted, and I thought that was like really interesting as well. Like um, like I thought there were like solid deck lists with like the guy main deck like twelve bestial monsters. He played a way smaller deck count of like closer to like forty, um. And I was like, I was like, wait, this is like pretty good, you know. And and it's just it's, it's so funny. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. When you see that like um really like just outperform other decks but then they get like they just miss like top cut which yep. like you know they still get credit for for doing well it's just anyone can lose anyone can win on the bubble it's yeah. that last round that defines it that but, is something I mean, amazing I... applying like in Yu-Gi-Oh scene especially when people do not win events like yeah. when they are in the bubble yeah. as you as Pac said you watch the deck list you see a spicy idea but you can do it better yeah exactly yeah and like that's, and that's in my like opinion, that. what people do not understand. You have to watch the people who bubbled also that because there are some ideas right there yeah. that they didn't work out because they did not have the knowledge that you had. Yeah, I think like um, a good example of this was like the Sky Striker Orcus deck. Um, there was actually like a regional profile of, of a guy who like, <coughs> excuse me, who topped with, um, with, with, uh, a Sky Striker Orcus, but it was like one of the most underrated. Like, it was honestly the best deck of the format, but people just didn't by know far. it about it. Yeah, by far. Um, and then like Gunther, like I wasn't there at the time, but Gunther like tells me the story, and he was like, at the time he like showed like Hani and a bunch of other people like, yo, bro, did you see this like profile? Like some guy just topped with this like Sky Orcus deck. It's like it seems like interesting, you know, like whatever, right? They started testing it a little bit more. And they're like, yo, this deck is crazy, right? But I think the point to make is that like there are definitely like hidden gems out there so like you know it's 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 always interesting to like see what you can pick up and what you can learn because i think overall long-term growth is just better anyways right like so i watch like all the profiles regardless um because i think there's always like something to learn from those people um yeah i agree <clears throat> we talked about old school duelists right a lot of people a lot of people who played back into the day as, as you call it back in back in my day um, they're, back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> they're uh making a comeback to the scene uh, what do you what do you think old school duelists have to offer to the current scene that the c people in the current scene like don't see or like don't do you know <clears throat> um i definitely think uh with deck building um a lot of like old deck building theory kind of got lost over the years and yep. people kind of just like stick to whatever they see online and it's like you lost a lot of originality um it, it also makes a lot less um uh like a lot less like changes to decks going into like events you can kind of predict better um but back then like, i feel like it was it was really up there like someone could come with like come up with like a crazy deck and then like that deck would have the edge for a tournament but like now i feel like it's people lack that originality so i think the old the old school players can bring that back yeah. So there is a thing about <clears throat> knowledge, like there is a, a thing about old players that I really love. They know how to fucking play in a game state that's control. Like they know how to fucking play yeah. control. People lost that. People don't fucking know when they are not comboing <coughs> how to play. They don't fucking know if, if when your opponent bricks, you don't have to go full combo. 
All you have to do is establish a board with resources. People yeah. just go full combo ins into end traps. Uh, uh, GG, end of the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that's, 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 actually... that's the mind setting that all the players have and new players do not have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they definitely value card advantage a lot higher um, and just like stabilizing the game state, which is, is like a, a thing people, new players like don't really see. Like they could mess up in their combo and then just like totally throw a match or throw a game because of it instead of just being able to play it in like in a simplified game state. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny because like I think uh, the whole topic on like card advantage is – so interesting and that that's like what draws me to like decks like rudik sprite so much is because like i feel like i'm literally trying to fight for like that plus one like <laughs> so much that plus one card it's like yeah. it feels like goat format in a yeah sense. <laughs> like i'm like bro i'm like i'm like str- every game takes like literally every ounce of like everything i have i'm like yo i'm trying to fight for that just just to be up one card on my opponent so i can like uh come out of the the grind game um, and I find that like so much fun and that's why I feel like I always like gravitate towards like retro formats and stuff because I feel like it's such a different skill set to have playing like, you know, like all these like retro yeah. formats. Um, uh, and I, I find like there's, you know, like I think the thing to take away from all of this is that like being a good Yu-Gi-Oh player is kind of like a holistic thing, right? It's not just like you're good at one thing or this, oh, you're good at another thing. It's kind of like you have to be like a good at basically everything, um, and, and I think, yeah. like, that's how you become, like, basically the GOAT, to be honest. It, um, which is, like, really, really There's hard a lot to that goes into it. Yeah, for like, sure. It's not just, like, you can't just be, like, good at playing the game. You have to, like, take every outside, like, source and, like, put yeah. it into the game <clears throat> and what you've learned throughout your life. It's, it's there's there's no simple way to explain Yu-Gi-Oh! to anybody, honestly. Yeah, yeah like, like, people right there are rushing for game when you can just conceptually game your opponent. Or, yeah. Like, you know, you can stabilize your deck adding instead of bricks to make your combo stronger, you can just stabilize your deck adding more resources. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's also a thing that all the players have, but you new players do not really get the concept. What uh, what, what do you feel like you excel the most in? Like, do you feel like, is, is it like technical play? Is it like uh, deck building? Like, what do you feel like you excel at the most, at it, like from a perspective of Yu-Gi-Oh? I know we talked about like being more holistic with our approach, but like, what do you feel like you uh really really specialize in or like when you if you like i feel like yeah. uh <clears throat> so i would i would say the least out of the three um i would say deck building okay. um there's been times where i've like had like good deck building ideas like i can build a deck but um i think I, i'm better at technical play than that um and then i would say honestly like reading my opponents would probably yeah. be the thing i'm the strongest at um like that's probably like what I value as the most important in going into a game like mm-hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh because you just just being able to to play versus your opponent instead of playing like first like the deck that you're playing against is like a huge advantage. Um, as you can see, like from the finals that I played, where I was at a huge disadvantage from what happened. He shifted me. He had like it's just being able to like kind of have your opponent play like a certain way, like um, get in their head. That's like a huge part of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Even though a lot of people don't like you don't talk about it. Yeah, I, I feel like I, when I watch you play, I feel like that's definitely one of your strong suits. I feel like you have a really good mind game. To be honest, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, you, do you play any other card games? Um, um, Poker. Poker, nice. Yeah. No, bro, don't do that. I already <laughs> that shit. Uh, that, that's a misplay. That's a misplay right there. Uh, I mean, are you I nice? I pretty well. It's okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, he, nice, he, nice. nice. He, he, I have this, he, I have this, this tattoo in my hand. Yeah, I saw that. I saw the poker. Uh, I saw the poker. I saw the poker. Yeah, I see you. I Yo, like it's nice because uh, I, I, you came up a little nicely on the on poker recently. It's pretty clean. Oh I, yeah, right, right, right when we were going to Ecuador, actually, we we uh we met up in the airport, and I was yep. telling you how I hit a one in six hundred and fifty thousand chance. I flopped the royal flush, and I was like, this is just, it was what my the fuck? my yeah, he flopped the royal, I guess. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was <laughs> the royal. Yeah, that. What 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 is what are, what's better odds? Opening Exodia and a f- starting five card hand, or opening or like fl- flopping a royal flush? What flopping do you think? Royal? I feel like I feel like it has to be flopping a royal. It has to be like yeah. oh, no, better odds Exodia. I feel like. I yeah. don't know. It's that's tough. That's a tough one. I, I would have to just like do the math. I know it's one <laughs> in six hundred and fifty thousand to flop a royal. Okay. I mean, I mean, so. someone can do the math on like drawing Zodi in the first hand. <laughs> that, that's, that's that's probably somewhere up there. I mean, like that's what I, I like. You know, attribute like you know. I it's a, that's like my Yu Gi Oh equivalent. You know. <laughs> yeah. I'll flop I count the rest of the time that I open <laughs> and the double ace, and I got fucked by simple pair. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that's just bound to happen, but that's also bound to happen in Yu-Gi-Oh too. So like I compare the yeah. games a lot like because they're very similar and the way you have to like read players, you have to like it's obviously a card game, but it's not as complex mm-hmm. poker, but you mm-hmm. know just like people are, which is what makes it like you know hard. Yep. It's it's not simple in any way. Yeah. 
I I know um you know we we talked about a little bit about uh, go, going back to like competitive Yu Gi Oh and and like you know topping doing a lot of events. You said you had like a year in which like you bubbled like five events in a row. Uh, I went through yeah. the same experience. What? How how do you stay motivated to keep going? Right? Like how do you stay motivated Oof. to keep performing? Uh, going it's through that because you go to a lot but of events. I, yeah, I think, think you go to as much events as yeah. I do. So. It's really tough, um, you know, digging yourself out of that hole because there was a time period where I, I just didn't um, – I went through this dry spell for the past, like, few months. Um, after I topped uh, Mexico, I got third. I didn't top an event for – it was, like, four events, I think. It was U.S. Nationals, um, Niagara, um, Brazil, and um, Ecuador. So four events I didn't top. Yeah. And then I topped, obviously, Minneapolis. But that was, like, a, like you know, a little, like, dry spell. It happens. But I don't, I don't think I was playing um, – up the par with how I was um like after pranks got hit I feel like that took a big toll on me because I was immediately forced to switch and I had a lot less motivation because the format was kind of stale um but then when tier cards came out I started getting like way more serious about it I'm like oh these cards are insane like I'll love a format like this and then it reminded me a lot of zoo honestly like uh just or like any like yeah like tier zero deck and I think, um, I think, uh, I think something that, oh man, I had this insane question in my head that I was thinking about, and then I, I just lost it. But, uh, okay, in the meanwhile, you think about it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will tell you that I calculated on top of my head, just using my, you know, my computer uh, brain, that uh, there are one in 658,008 odds to draw the five pieces of Exodia. And depending oh, so on it's the close. Shape, it's really close. It's like the same odds. <laughs> yeah. And depending on the shape of your card, it can also be one and one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not a wild. That's not oh a wild. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was okay. I think I think I I think I finally uh, remembered what I was going to talk about, which is um I know in uh when we were in Ecuador, right? You you and you were talking about how like um you felt like you weren't as prepared or, or maybe like the the deck choice wasn't like the best deck choice for that event specifically um so you know like i guess like when you feel those moments where you feel like damn this isn't like the right deck and that was early in the rounds too right like i feel like it was like round two or three when I you told me that yeah it wasn't it wasn't that I, I did not feel prepared or the deck wasn't good yeah. i actually felt the exact opposite i feel like okay. i was playing one of the best decks in the room yeah and i was very confident about how i was playing that tournament i just yeah. felt like i wasn't prepared for the 3v3 specifically ah, okay, because yeah. i didn't have um like desmond obviously not being like in the format like we did we should have had him play a less complex deck because we yeah. had him play the same deck as us which was already hard enough uh, on our own like dealing with like numerous things like having to like help with like a lot of like interactions mm -hmm. should have just had him play a different deck so it would uh would have gone over better but i think that's really what i was like i wasn't prepared to for a 3v3 in, in yeah. itself not really like the format because i felt great going into the tournament like yeah. i felt like i i played a lot um and then i was just ready but i know i was like really regretting not like looking into three like a 3v3 like how you should do it more yeah and we have a uh, 3v3 vegas coming up bro you, you got a teammate yeah. you got a team ready <laughs> yeah, I got it's uh it's me, uh Pat and Cody. So two oh. national champions on the team. Oh, oh <laughs> shoot, okay. That sounds crazy. That sounds stacked. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez. Uh, yeah, one last question, event. Chris. One last question. Uh which is the <laughs> event you tested the most but you didn't perform well? Ooh. Um like you were very confident. You were like, I'm gonna win this. But that was not your day. That's nasty. Because really I feel like every, um, there's a lot of events we prepared a lot for. There's a lot of events, yeah, where like I feel like I put in a lot of effort and you just like you just get unlucky sometimes. It'll it'll just happen. Um maybe uh Niagara was pretty rough. Um I tested a lot for Niagara and then I just I lost uh round ten, I believe. Yeah. Or wait, or is there round uh how many rounds were in Niagara? It was, I lost it was ten. Round it was, one. It was ten rounds. Two. No, Niagara was ten so rounds. I lost round nine. Okay. I lost yeah. round nine of Niagara, but I feel like I was like so in the zone. Like I feel like I tested so much. I was I was ready. But it's so crazy because that that question always like uh is so tough to always answer because I feel like I prepared so much for like so many events. For a and, lot of events, it's yeah. Like, that's the one that stuck <laughs> out the most. That's why it's yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah, you know which event actually like killed me the most? I think it was YCS Quito. That that event killed me. Yeah, that yeah that event that was event crazy. Was, well, you know it killed me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we both did. Language barrier alert. What? <laughs> yeah, that that Language barrier me. alert.
Literally, that event killed me. I, I, that, that your deck was, was crazy like, too, actually. Your deck was, you were playing, wait, what deck were you playing? You are playing Tillament, uh, Runic, right? Tillament, Sprite, Runic. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I fucking crazy. love it. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love your deck, it. Your deck was crazy too. It was insane. Too. Like, I, I felt yeah. great. I only lost one time. Um, It was just, you know, a different type of tournament, so it really threw me off. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Tillament Soul was is so good, in my opinion. Like, the Tillament engine mixed so well with Runic because you only need one Runic. Because you can set again it with Griffon after you mill. I, yeah. I love it. Like the, the interaction, the synergy. When it's Pratt, you have to open multiple. And that's very yeah. sad that it, it didn't see that much of a representation, to be honest. No, they, they, I really they, love they were the only one playing that. that. Like Chris, Chris's team was the only one playing that tier runic sprite deck. I thought it was like really yeah. cool. Um, I was like, pretty, it was pretty yeah. innovative. You guys Ibli too, right? Were you guys Ibling in that deck? Uh, yeah, but like it had a lot <laughs> less of a. A lot less of an effect, I feel like, because yeah. there's a lot of like a lot more combos. Um, I feel like we would focus, like we would focus on Ibli, but we'd focus more on the Runic stuff most of the time because it would give us more in card advantage and just having like stopping it. But I felt a huge problem with that deck specifically, just the Runic cards in general. You want your battle phase to get rid of stuff. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. one of the most important parts of like that, like the tier deck in general. Yeah. Um, being able to go through stuff and then and then like do your board afterwards, set up and like make it so you, you can't lose. Yep, yep. Um, bro, bro, this this is uh this is this is insane. What uh do you have any? I always end this because I I feel like uh t towards the end for people who make it all the way to the end, uh a, a piece of like advice for anyone who is trying to get into the competitive scene, uh and trying to be insane. Um, do you have any piece of advice you want you want to give them? Any last remarks? Um. Never be scared to share your ideas with your friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Honestly, it, it may be tough to do sometimes because you want to have the advantage, but there's always got to be somebody that you can like bounce your ideas off of. Like, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I totally agree with that. Never share my goo with Nash. He he's always makes it worse. <laughs> Bro, you always call me ass. So every time I I give you the goo. <laughs> Every time I give you the good, you always call me ass because you say you are crazy. You are a crackhead. How, how did you think about that? I'm actually scared to share my idea with you. <laughs> no, no, listen, no, that's not true. That's not true. Unless. Um, but all right, guys, uh, this is Chris, four-time YCS champion. That's freaking insane to even say that. <laughs> Let's go, baby. City Mr. boys. All right, guys. Boys. So this is it hope you guys enjoyed the podcast uh don't forget to subscribe to me nash and also chris on his channel as well um check the socials below in the description box i uh, hope you guys have an amazing day we'll see you guys at ycs pasadena uh, say hi to all of us all of us will actually be attending uh obviously chris and i attend like so many of these events but nash yeah, will actually be gonna, in i'm, Amer I'm yes. coming i'm gonna cook everyone right, crazy. <laughs> nash is gonna be in uh kekona land so um hopefully he gets a feature match i, I can't wait to, to watch it back no, and roast no, no. Them. I, I can't <laughs> because i swear i swear a lot they cannot invite me on stream it's over if they invite me on stream. <laughs> I, so it should be imagine good. konami get banned from twitch it's over jesus <laughs> all right guys anyways uh, appreciate you guys. I'll talk to you guys later. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.